In my shop this week, I've got a project that requires me to veneer a 4x8 sheet of plywood. Um, and on this particular video, I'm going to show you the process of how I take a piece of paper vac veneer like this and adhere it to this substrate that you see below. Um, this is called combo core plywood. It has an MDF layer on the outsides of a plywood core and it makes a really nice plywood. So. What I wanted to talk about was why in the world I would veneer a 4x8 sheet of plywood when you can clearly buy commercial uh, veneered plywood. There's a couple reasons. One of them is on a commercial veneer, it is usually rotary cut. So if you looked into that and got some research, you would see that they would take a log on a knife blade and essentially spin the log and it peels off in this repetitive form. And what that results in is a pattern in the plywood where you see each piece repeating over and over again. And a lot of parts that I build, that's not the biggest concern because it's uh, the inside of a case, the sides, something that doesn't really matter. But for what I need on this particular project is called a uh, plank matched veneer. And what that is, is instead of the repetitive pattern that I talked about, they take individual planks and match them for color uh, but they repeat the pattern uh, to where you can't see a noticeable pattern on the wood. So each board is different, they rotate them, they do all kinds of things like that to break up the look of a repetitive plywood panel. So that's the look that I need. This particular one has a paper back veneer and so that allows me to work with it a little easier without it being so fragile. Um, it helps on imperfections in the substrate, it hides those because it makes it a little bit thicker of a veneer than the paper thin stuff that you'll get on a commercial plywood sheet. Um, so I'm gonna take you through that process, show you how I veneer uh, the four by eight sheet, how I use a, another separate veneer on the bottom as a backer veneer, because on plywood, anything you do to one side and veneer, you have to do that matching on the other side. So instead of walnut on both faces, in this particular project, I'm able to use a separate plywood uh, color face on the bottom and so I'm just using a cheap backer veneer um, on the back side of the sheet so I'll show you that as well. Here's a little closer look at the walnut veneer um, on the plank matching where the color is all very similar but the pattern does not just have this totally repetitive look like you see on the sheet good material that is available. Contrasting that with the commercial veneer where you see the repetitive pattern. This is pretty common on a lot of plywood. The combo core plywood that I'm going to use that I talked about that has the MDF exterior on both sides, you can see the layers of plywood in the center. Another setup that's required for this large of a panel is a veneer bag um, and a vacuum pump. So this actually will house the panel that we make and we'll suck all the air out using this Venturi pump that I made um, from a company called Veneer Supplies. Um, you can find a lot of different vacuum pumps. This is one that's actually offered in a DIY kit. So it's, uh, I love it, it works great, and it works especially well for these large size bags. So another thing that you need inside the bag is called a platen. And generally, this is made with a melamine or something that doesn't allow the glue to stick to it. Uh, but on the same hand, it has all these grooves cut through it that allows air to pass under the panel on the bottom side of the panel. And then you put a breather mesh material on top that has a bunch of holes, allowing the air to totally um, sep uh, suck through the bag and the skin of the panel that we make. So I'll show you that in depth uh, as we move forward. One of the first things that you need to do is get down an even amount of glue over this entire four by eight surface. And what I use is a veneer roller um, that's specially made to have a large hopper holding the glue. It's really wide at six inches, so it gets the coverage laid down very quickly. And you'll see the advantage to using this uh, in just a second. Another glue that I use for veneer, especially in large panels, is just regular wood glue. PVA wood glue works really well for big panels. It covers a lot, it's affordable. It dries quickly. Um, again, because it introduces moisture to the wood, you have to do this on both sides of the plywood. So that's the a big disadvantage to this glue is the water content, but it works well for basic glue ups like this. We're gonna use a ton of glue on this thing. So the large hopper 
is really nice. And as you see, I've got the glue in the hopper, we've got this roller, and then this other roller that when I release this trigger, allows the glue to flow down onto the roller, and then this will apply an even uh, amount over the entire top. So let me show you that now. I uh, typically like to go around the perimeter just to make sure I get enough coverage. That's a spot that is easily missed. And I literally just walk around the perimeter of the piece. And you can see how fast this is laying down. Um, one thing after I roll this out is I'll continue rolling, but I'll stop the glue application. So all that it will do is spread the glue evenly versus continuing to apply more and more glue as I roll, trying to make it even. But you can see here, in just a short amount of time, I'm more than halfway done with applying glue to a four foot by eight foot surface. If you look closely, you can see here how even the glue is applied. I typically start with the side of the, the panel that doesn't matter to me as much um, because the glue has to remain open while I do the side that does matter. And on these large panels, it can be kind of hard to get it all done at once. So I'm actually going to take my backer veneer, which is not the walnut. This is called a kume plywood. And we are going to lay it out, getting it fully covered on the piece. And we have to move quick because this stuff will stick up and set really quickly. It can definitely be help easier with two people to help lay this and uh, get it on the first round. <laughs> um, one thing that you may not know is on higher quality sheet goods, because of the risk of damage, they actually come a little bit bigger than a four by eight sheet. They're usually 49 by 97 inches, and that allows for you to cut off any damage. So this veneer sheet that actually measures four by eight isn't quite big enough to cover, but that isn't a problem because we'll square it up, cut everything that we need from this panel after the fact. So I'm just pressing, allowing the glue to contact the substrate and the veneer. And then I'm gonna take a couple pieces of tape and just kind of go around the perimeter just to make sure when I flip this panel that it all stays in place where I want it. All right, so I've got this side glued. My next step is gonna be flipping it over, doing the same thing with the walnut veneer. So I'm just gonna grab the panel, bring it to the center of my cart and roll. As you can see, with the, the wetness of this piece, the plywood is actually warping. So that's the reason that you do it. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the second side. All right, so when I feel confident that that is in a good position, the even amount of glue, I will grab my veneer and bring it in place. I'm just going to attempt to find the edge and then uh, unroll the veneer, simply unroll. The next part of the process is getting this panel inside this bag. And one of the things that I found that works really well is to raise this up to the same height as the table and using the melamine platen, once I get this started, this is so slick that I can just push the panel in. Now that we're in the bag, the next thing we need to do is seal this end up and then start getting the air out. So I'm going to show you how I do that. The 
The next part of the process is actually getting the air line hooked up and removing the air. So let's watch that. And as you can see here, all of this is air removed and it is sucking down as tight as it can, putting an even amount of pressure on that entire panel at the same time, top and bottom. I typically let this sit for a couple hours uh, if I'm working throughout the day and need the panel, um, but sometimes uh, it can sit overnight. It doesn't really matter um, as long as it is sealed and continuously getting vacuum pressure during the glue time. Um, that's all that matters. So I let this sit for a couple hours. I'll pull it and we'll take a look at it. I'm going to open and release the bag by opening it and allowing air to enter. We'll just pull it back so we can get to the panel. And slide it back out. And you can see right here on the edge that we are totally smashed against that substrate. I'm gonna raise my cart up to match the height of the plywood, pull it out and load the cart. And there you have it, the pressed panel. Now you can really see the plank matching, how the entire panel is different orientations or pieces from the tree that are not just a mirror image repeated a pattern. Next thing I'm gonna do is just simply remove all the tape and uh, we'll look at both sides of the panel. A very effective way of cutting plywood is simply laying down pink foam, putting the substrate on there, and using a track saw. So that's what I'm going to do. The first thing I'm going to do is lay down and cut a line. And then everything that I do after that will reference off of this initial cut. So I'm just looking at the veneer, getting an appropriate um, cut line letting my track down and I will make the cut. And here you can see the panel that I just made on the left versus the commercially available plywood on the right. This plank match veneer has a lot of variation, even though they're from the same tree, versus a rotary cut veneered plywood where the pattern repeats. And yes, this is a really bad example of how well they can hide it. This is really common in walnut plywood. So for what I need, I need the plank match veneer and that's one of my favorite things about it. Yes, that is a labor intensive process. Yes, that requires specialty tools. But in the end, this is the product that I need, a veneer that doesn't have a repeatable consecutive pattern to break up the look, to help it look like more solid wood, furniture, pieces like that. Those are the things that you get the advantage of buying plank match veneer. So in this particular instance, I needed to do a four by eight sheet, which isn't totally uncommon, but for this, I'm very happy with how it turned out. And I hope you got to see the difference and why I chose that. I hope you liked what you see. I hope you like and subscribe to this channel, and we'll show you more every week. Talk to you later. Bye.